Hi, I'm Bruce Busby, president of Roots Magic, and it's time again to take a short break from programming to show you another one of the fun features in Roots Magic 8. Today we're going to talk about sources. So when we want to work with sources, we are just going to select sources tab here on the side to bring up the sources page. And what you're going to see is a list of all your master sources right here. They're just an alphabetical list. And you can do things from here, like filter your sources. So for example, I can just come up here and say I want to type in 1940, and Roots Magic is going to filter down my list of master sources to only sources that have 1940 in them. Very straightforward. I can click the little X to close that filter and bring it back to the full list of sources that I have. If I want to add a new source, I can simply click the little plus sign up here and Roots Magic is going to bring up our source wizard. And for those who have used Roots Magic 7, this is going to feel very familiar. It's going to be almost exactly the same. Uh, you can select the source type and if you want to, you can create favorites and then select your favorite ones. You can also click to bring up recent ones. You can also filter this list with the little filter box exactly like you could before. You know, for example, if you wanted to come up here and and uh, do a, uh, let's say, uh, Bible records, I would select Bible records, click next, and Roots Magic's going to allow me to enter the name for this master source. That's what's going to show up in the list there. And then it's going to give me all of the fields that are necessary to create that source. Family title, subtitle, edition, published place, and so on. And then once I've added all that, I click OK, and Roots Magic will create that master source and add it to the master source list right here. Okay, there's also the ability to, if I select a source, if I'm working with a source, over here, I can edit that source. I can also delete the source. So if I want to get rid of a master source, I don't need it anymore for some reason. I just click the little trash can and it says, are you sure you want to, to remove this? And of course, in this case, I don't. But if I did, I can click yes to go ahead and delete that. I can also go ahead and edit, edit sources here as well. So, for example, if I select this, I'm going to select this Census New York 1855. This happens to be a template source, and it shows you the type of source right here over on the right when I, select, when I highlight that. And I can come in here and edit that source name. Again, that's the name that's going to show in this list. And I, can, I can also edit the fields that make up this master source, in this case, the county, the year and the type, the schedule, the item type, reference number. If I want to enter source text or source comments, I can enter that as well. I can click and it will slide in my note editor and allow me to edit that right there. It will also let me uh, add media to this source. So if I've got a scanned image of the source that I want, I can add that there. I can add the repository where I might find this source. I can just click that and go right into it and edit the, add the source or select it or add the repository or select an existing repository. It also allows you to add web tags. That's basically links to websites uh, to this source. So if I click on that, that opens up any web tags that I've added to this source. I can add new web tags and I can go in and delete uh, web tags, things like that as well. I can also see where this source is used. So in this case, this particular source is used in eight different places. And if I click on that, it brings up that. I got the, all the events or names or whatever families where this particular source is used. And I can see that right there. Now, if I happen to want to enter, if I've entered a freeform source, then the source type is going to show me freeform. In this case, rather than having the fields for the particular source, I'm going to have the um, I'm going to have the footnote where I can click on that and just enter the footnote directly so I can enter whatever I want. 
This works very much just like version 7 did. Uh, it's just much more convenient. Everything is here in one place. I can enter the short footnote, the bibliography, reference number, again, media repositories, web tags, and the places where this particular source is used. Now, one thing that you'll notice is this particular source is used in 92 places. If I click on that, I can see all of those places where this particular source is used. But if you look right here in this column, you can see that there are only 11 citations for this source. Now that's different from Roots Magic 7. In Roots Magic 7, every time you had a citation, it created a completely new citation. In Roots Magic 8, citations are now reusable. Okay, not just the source, but the citation itself is reusable. So if I go ahead and click on that 11 citations, Roots Magic slides over and gives me a list of the citations for that source. And in this case, like I say, there's 11, uh, 11 citations right here. And with this, when I highlight one of these, I can actually edit the citation details right here. In this case, since it's a free form, the only citation detail really that I have available is that page number. But if this was a templated source and a templated citation, I would see all the fields that belong to this citation right here as well. Okay, again, I can also add media to a citation. I can add media to the source itself, the master source, or to a citation, okay? In this case, if, I have a, if I've already got media attached to it, I can click on it, it will slide it right in there, and I can choose whether or not I want this particular media included in scrapbooks, and things like that. Okay, I, again, when I highlight a citation, it's allowing me to add web tags to the citation, and it's also letting me show where this citation is used. So although, if I'm going to go ahead and click this back arrow here to go back, although this source was used in 92 places, this particular citation is used in eight of those places. And if I click on that, I can see the eight events or names or whatever that are using this specific citation. Again, as I mentioned, the citation is reusable. Now, one other thing that you can see is when I highlight a citation, down here below, you will see the footnote, the short footnote, and the bibliography based on the data that you've typed. Now, these are based on the template. So if you've got a template, if you've got a template, these footnotes and short footnote and bibliography, just like in Roots Magic 7, are based on the template. The template takes the data that you've typed in and puts together and builds the properly formatted footnote, short footnote, and bibliography. Now, one of the things that's new in version 8 is the ability to customize your citation. So if I click on Customize, I can bring up a screen that will have my footnote, my short footnote, and my bibliography right here and I can come in and actually modify the footnote that Roos Magic created. Okay, this is not something that you can do in 7. In 7, the program would take the template, put together the footnote, and that's what you were stuck with, basically, was that footnote put together the way Roots Magic wanted you to. Now, I can come in here and I can, you know, add my cool text. You know, I can, I can modify this footnote however I want, and if I click OK, Roots Magic is going to save my modified footnote, and that's what it will use in generating reports and whenever it needs to display the footnote uh, for whatever it's attached to. It will use my completely modified. So if I need to go in and add a comma or take out a period or anything like that, I can go in and modify that. Now, if I ever want to return this uh, footnote, short footnote of bibliography, back to the Roots Magic generated version, all I have to do is come up here and click Reset. And when I click Reset, what Roots Magic will do is regenerate my footnote, short footnote, and bibliography 
based on the template and, and, and reset it back to that value. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to show you if I move up to the people, okay, that what we were doing is we were working with the sources themselves in this part. There's also a menu up here for some other options. If you need to merge duplicate sources, uh, like two sources, you can do that. If you want to merge all the duplicate sources automatically, you can do that. If you want to merge all your duplicate citations, you can do that as well. For example, you may import data from another program, and let's say that program does not let you reuse citations. So you may have you may have a source and 15 of those citations may be exactly the same. Well, this merge duplicate citations will merge those into a single citation so that you have that that one citation being reused. So it gives you the option of doing that. If you want to keep them all, all your citations completely independent, you can do that. But if you'd like to have them merge so that they are being reused, you can do that as well. Again, you can delete and copy sources. And then the source template list, this is where you can create your own source templates. This is exactly the same as in version 7, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on, on that. But this will let you uh, go in and create your own source templates. Now, when I'm working with people, for example, if I go into a person's edit screen, when I highlight a piece of information, for example, I highlight the person, I can see the general, in this case, the general sources for this person. I can see the citations right here. If I highlight the birth, I have the birth information, and here's my sources for that person's birth. Now, when I have an existing citation, I can just click on that, and I can edit those citation details right from here. And I can also assign the quality and add media or the web tags or see all the other places that this that this particular citation is used. Now keep in mind that if I do make changes right here, it's going to affect not only this particular citation, but it's also going to affect any the citation that's being used by all these other people. Because again, this is a reused this is a reused citation, so changing it here is going to change it for the other places that it is being reused. Okay, now if I want to, I have two buttons right here under the sources, and I'm working on the birth again. I have two buttons right here, so I can say I want to add a new source. What that means is I want to add a new source itself, a new master source, and when I select when I select something uh, something for that, click next, fill the information in for that source, then I can click next, and then it will allow me to enter the citation details. So that particular option lets me add a new source and the citation details, and it creates the citation and will add it right here to the birth. On the other hand, if there's already a source. A master source that I want to use, I can click Cite Existing Source, and that brings up that same list of sources. It just brings it up right here, and I can select the source I want, click Next, and then I can enter those citation details. If there's actually a citation that I want to reuse, then I can do that as well. I can say Select the Existing Citation, and it will give me the list of the citations for that source that I just picked, and I just select select that existing citation. And that's how it allows me to reuse citations. Well, this was a quick overview of the new sources, the reusable sources in Roots Magic 8. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. We're working hard on getting this out. We are in beta testing right now. We are beta testing, and uh, pretty soon we're going to be uh, bringing on even more beta testers. And so if you've requested to help beta test, hopefully you should be getting an email uh, in the next little while asking you if you want to beta test and giving you that option. Uh, so keep an eye out for that and we'll talk to you later.